Greetings everyone, my name is Errol Coder, and this is Plantry Television. Alright everyone, just to fill you in, yesterday the Cassini Equinox spacecraft, it's a probe the size of a school bus that's currently orbiting around Saturn at this time, did a close flyby of Saturn's moon Enceladus. Uh, its target was to fly over the south pole of Enceladus and to do heat measurements of an area of its south pole called the Tiger Stripes uh, because through heat they look like Tiger Stripes. So the object was is to measure the heat so they can have an idea of the radiant heat that's being given off by uh, Enceladus. Now this can be in the form of its um, of work done within its uh, its uh, its core, as well as any geological, you know, active occurrences on the uh, on the moon itself. <clears throat> now I, I want to focus on some images and some animations gathered by Emily Wakawala, who is the science and technology coordinator for the Planetary Society. Uh, this first image. As you can see here, I mean, the first, you know, when, when I personally saw this image, I was like, wow! You may be looking at it and be wondering, what the heck am I seeing? I mean, honestly, that was the first thing I looked at. You're seeing a vertical line going across the, you know, the, the objective, the, um, the image, and what you'll see what looks like the crest of Enceladus on the top right of the image. And so, what in fact could that line be? It's very confusing, <clears throat> but if you, have, you have to realize what you're looking at. You're looking at, with, with Enceladus, you're looking at the night side of Enceladus. So the right side where you see the crescent is actually the, the light that's, you know, the only visible light that we can see from our angle um, from uh, Cassini. Now, what you're actually seeing below it is Saturn. Saturn, you're seeing a slim light crescent of Saturn because Cassini is also on the night side of Saturn. This next animation, you can see it clearly. As the approach occurs, you're seeing Enceladus slowly rise in front of Saturn above Saturn's crescent in the background. And it, 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 it's, it's a great shot. I mean, it's one of those shots that you don't see very often. Most often when you see Saturn, you're either seeing, you know, the, you know it's, it's day side, where you see the, the rings very visible and very recognizable, but not often do you, can you really get this side of, and, of Saturn. And this is really the only, the, the only real situation when it comes to the night side of Saturn, pretty much any other, uh, any other uh, moon or any... Uh, stellar object that that really makes it amazing. Otherwise, it would be pretty boring. So you're seeing you know, what you're actually seeing that haze. You're also you can sort of be, uh, be looking through its atmosphere. Um, you're still looking at Saturn from a distance, so the atmosphere itself is going to uh, appear thinner. But overall, the part that, you know the section that would show a thicker atmosphere, there's no light there. So what you're seeing. The atmosphere could be a lot thicker visually, but you're just not seeing it because of the light. So you're looking at Enceladus. This image here is showing it as it rises, and you know, this 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 shot right here is you know it's, it's still pretty far, as it's it's currently trying to approach uh, Enceladus itself. But then we come to this other one. This one is showing. You know, in the in the previous image, you're showing um, sat or showing Enceladus with the 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 crescent on the right side, and the bottom is in fact the South Pole, which is the actual location in which Cini is you know is is aiming towards because it's going to be flying over, which in this view would be under the South Pole to visualize the dark area, which is the South Pole. <coughs> But in this new uh, animation, which again is done by Emily Lochtawalla, she's flipped the the moon above, you know, flipped it around. So you're so it's showing, so basically gives the viewer a 
a vision of us flying over the pole. Now, this image, she actually uh, put together 30 different raw images uh, showing, you know, the progression as we do the flyover. Now, the, I believe the images for the actual physical flyover where, where Cassini is actually looking down, or it would be up since it's going under the South Pole, but looking down at the South Pole as it goes over the, over the, you know, over the Terminator, which is what you call the dark edge that separates the light side and the dark side, which is this, this, the same that you would call for like the Terminator or the dark side. Of, if you're looking at our moon, um, we, we, we don't have any images yet of it going past the Terminator, which it will be going over the Terminator, looking down and seeing sections of the, of the light side. Now, from what I believe, the area in which they are measuring with their heat detectors is actually the dark side that you see. Uh, just, just, just right there at the Terminator. Now, some other aspects that you see there, I mean, you're seeing three active, uh, three active geysers. I believe these are, uh, I, I, let me confirm, it's either heat or, um, or ice geysers. From what I believe, it actually might be ice geysers. But I will confirm that for you. You're seeing three geysers that it sh what this really does show you is that Enceladus is active. It's geologically active and which also means that it's still causing en en Enceladus to actively change. It's, ge it's geology and its surface is still changing always. And this is, you know, as you, you notice that these these geysers are, are close to the South Pole, which I believe which is due to heat because the section which they are trying to photograph, trying to, or try to get the the heat signature from, is just below. Visually, you're seeing you're seeing it's the tiger stripe is just below the center um, geyser. So you're seeing how it's it's it, it's it's active geologically, and it shows how you know the possibility of many different organisms around, or not organisms. Um, planets or uh, moons around that may that are also active and <coughs> now what this also comes into possibility is just like how extremophytes here in earth exist in extreme situations such as the you know the the fire vents and the ice vents at the bottom of the oceans and even in like the hot the hot uh, springs in like Yosemite and, and different locations around the world there are organisms that exist in those extreme situations so you know you have to wonder whether or not life could possibly exist on uh, on this moon, and maybe that's you know that could be a target for future exploration if we ever do send a lander to uh, Cassini, like we plan on sending to uh, Europa, um, which is one of uh, Jupiter's Galilean moons. It's one of the four largest moons that you can visually see in a telescope and binoculars. There, you know, Europa is basically a ice planet. It's basically Hoth with a, we, uh, there is believed to be a liquid ocean, liquid, not solid, but liquid ocean below the ice surface. So just like here, it's geologically active and, you know, maybe in the future they may uh, send a lander to Europa or to, um, to Enceladus and to explore it. Uh, so, I'll see if I can gather some images for once it has gone and fl uh, flown over the Terminator and once they re release any images of the heat signatures, anything that, that can show any type of um, geologically active situations, which we know it's there, that's why we're going, but we're trying to get more information, then I'll go ahead and bring you an update and, and let you know. But if you look at this, it, it, it's an amazing thing. Uh, if you're looking at raw images, so they're, you know, they're uncalibrated, they're unprocessed, for color and proper, you know, composition, and soon this images will become active. So let me bring this information to you, and I'll get back to you. I'd like to thank you for uh, joining me, and I'd like to thank Emily Lockdewall of the Planetary Society for uh, making these animations available. And thank you all for joining me. This was Planetary Television. My name is Errol Coder, and as always, keep looking up.